Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out one of the flashiest phones of 2022 thus far, the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. This is a proper premium flagship smartphone through and through, boasting proper game and grunt, clever camera tech and also a full view display. There's no notch or selfie orifice here thanks to ZTE's fresh new updated under display camera tech. Woof! The ZTE Axon 40 Ultra goes on sale globally on June the 21st and here's a video of me pulling it out of this here box and banging on about it a lot. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you get in that rather lovely box? Well, you've got an actually quite dinky power adapter, 65 watts bundled in the box, a rather delightful USB-C cable, you got some earphones bundled in there and they are actually your regular 3.5mm efforts as well which made me think, oh my god the ZT Axon 40 Ultra actually has a headphone jack. But no, don't get your hopes up, it's complete lies, there is no headphone jack on here. So you're basically freaking useless. And you got your usual prophylactic case to keep the ZT Axon 40 Ultra safe from harm with a comedically huge camera cut out there. And that is well and truly that. So here we have the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. And it's obvious from the minute you pull the wrapping off this thing that it's a premium device through and through. Just looks very, very sleek. 204 grams has got a decent heft to it as well. It is a 6.8 incher, so it's almost as gargantuan as some of the biggest smartphones of 2022, including like the S22 Ultra. And like the Ultra, it's got that curved display that just slopes off around the left and right edges as well. And very skinny bezels above and below that massive display too. But of course the most striking aspect of the ZT Axon 40 Ultra's design is the fact that you've got absolutely bugger all notch or selfie orifice action up here at the top end. This is thanks to ZTE's latest super snazzy upgraded under display camera technology. They've had a couple of bashes at this before and you can generally see that under display selfie camera quite easily through the top layers. I found that especially when you tilt the screen at an angle it became all the more obvious but I gotta say here on the Axon 40 Ultra they have done a bang up job. If you spend a very long time trying different backgrounds and squinting very hard and kind of shifting it around to different angles you can just about notice it on occasion but honestly this thing is very very discreet it is hidden away incredibly well. The ZTE Axon 40 Ultra is constructed from Gorilla Glass front and back and that's separated by a very slender strip of metal. That back end certainly doesn't look or feel like glass thanks to the frosted matte finish which is actually really really good at repelling greasy fingerprints and all kinds of muck. Gotta say I've been fingering it pretty hard since I got it out so to speak and as you can see still looks pristine. I have to say though that camera bump is rather bloody massive at least in terms of width and height it doesn't actually jut too far at the back end of the Axon 40 which is a relief and if you were hoping for a selection of different colours with the Axon 40 Ultra where well, you might be disappointed because it comes in black and that's it basically. Not much else to speak about as far as the design goes you've got your IR blaster up top and a speaker down below you've got another speaker type C USB port and a sim tray and of course no headphone jack. Arr! So on the software side of things, what you've got here is of course Android 12 as you would hope for and also the MyOS 12 launcher is squatting on top of that as merrily as can be. Nothing particularly revolutionary as far as these Chinese launches go but it does have a pretty stock Android vibe which is always good to see. You've got your usual apps tray, no Google Discover feed and I can't see a way of actually bringing that in from the home screen settings. There is a display Google app option but that seems to do bugger all. And mercifully, because this is a 6.8 inch behemoth, you can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on the desktops. So there is a one-handed mode as well, which there you go. Usually takes me a couple of uh, stabs to actually get it to load up. You just got to swipe down at the bottom edge of the screen, basically. Definitely always delighted by a bit of one-handed help as I have quite stubby little fingers. And it would take a good long while to go through all the other bonus bits packed away into my OS because there's quite a lot. Personalization settings, you've got loads to tinker about with here. You can add themes, mess around with the look of the icons, the fingerprint animations, you've got an always on display. You can get that on a custom schedule if you want, otherwise showing all of the time. And as you can see, there are lots of different efforts to choose between. And fan favourites like the ZTE Locker or Back in Action as well, just displaying a different wallpaper every time you switch on the phone. ZTE is also chucked in a screen edge mistouch prevention tool as well, which is set to light by default. And touch one so far, I've had no issues with that whatsoever. My palm flab doesn't seem to be uh, buggering up the phone when it sort of intrudes ever so slightly on that screen. 
And then of course you've got all the usual Android shenanigans as well, including those fantastic Android 12 privacy features, always good to see. And on a security tip, well, the ZT Axon 40 Ultra sports an in-display fingerprint sensor. It is a basic optical scanner rather than an ultrasonic sensor, which a lot of rivals like the S22 series, for instance, sport. But at least that scanner is positioned quite high up the display, so you're not like reaching all the way down here for it. And so far, Touchwood seems very reliable indeed. And yes, that selfie camera does support face unlock as well. And again, touch wood seems to do the job. Just tap that power button, it scans for you. And despite the fact that it is buried away underneath that display, I've had no real issues with it. Certainly as long as you've got some decent lighting. So plenty to play around with here. As for the storage, well, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 space. As you can see there, this is the 128 gig base model. Not too much space taken up by system files. Either the bulk of this is just bloody Genshin Impact as usual. And sadly, as with most premium smartphones in 2022, there is no support for micro SD memory cards, just a double-sided SIM tray. Now that 6.8 inch AMOLED screen is an absolute stunner. It is a full HD plus panel that's 2480 by 1116. And to be fair, like every other premium smartphone out there these days, that OLED screen pumps out bright, sharp, punchy images. Certainly ideal for kicking back with some Disney Plus, some Netflix, whatever, even a good bit of your favorite bold tech YouTuber. You've got your wide viewing angles, you've got eye sear and output when you bump that brightness up to maximum levels, certainly fine for outdoor visibility. Contrast is perfectly sharp, some nice deep blacks, but of course the big whoop of the ZT Axon 40 Ultra's display is the fact that it is a full view panel, unhindered by notches or selfie cam cutouts. It is a cinephile's wet dream, like no other smartphones out there can offer this sort of experience apart from the likes of the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. If you dive on into the display settings, there's plenty to tinker about with here. You've got the usual nightlight, you've got a reading mode, which just makes things a bit easier on the eye. If you are just enjoying some text, you can play around with the color output. And this display does top off at 120 hertz refresh rate as well. I'm not sure if it's LTP or tech though, so I'm not sure if it drops as low as one hertz when the screen is barely in use. And then as for the audio, well, it is a stereo speaker setup, as you can see, both speakers mounted on the edges of the device. So let's crank up the volume, see if it's actually good. 70 chips, uh, which has been packed into loads of other phones, including the Black Shark 5 gaming handset, the Moto Edge 20 Pro, the Poco F4, of course. So overall, good stuff. Pump up that volume and you'll have no problem whatsoever enjoying a YouTube video, even in a fairly sort of noisy environment. Uh, the top speaker isn't quite as powerful as the bottom speaker. There is a slight imbalance but to be honest it's not really noticeable when you are just watching a video or whatever it's not unless you like muffle the speakers that you sort of really can pick up on that fact and the audio quality is absolutely fine as I say again just for you know kicking back with a video or two if you are going to be enjoying some music you're going to want to get connected with some bluetooth 5.2 action you've got all the usual codec support full DTSX ultra support on this thing as well so no massive shocks when it comes to what powers the ZTE Axon 40 Ultra. It is, of course, Qualcomm's mega mighty Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, backed here by 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM, although you can upgrade that to 12 gigs if you want. Everyday performance, perfectly smooth, strong benchmarking scores, as you would expect, but there's only one true test for the performance, and that is a good bit of Genshin. So I booted up Genshin Impact, boosted the graphic settings all the way up to the maximum levels with 60 frames per second active as well. And I've got to admit, my first experiences gaming here on the Axon 40 Ultra, not fantastic. The screen sensitivity went a bit all over the place with the multi-touch. So my character would start running about the place even though my fingers weren't anywhere near that left edge of the screen, which made battling Gribblies kind of difficult. Got my arse absolutely handed to me, even worse than normal, but thankfully a swift reboot of the Axon 40 Ultra seemed to sort it out and touch wood that's an issue that won't crop up again. With that little bug kicked right in the crotch, the gaming experience here on the Axon 40 Ultra was pretty good. The frame rate stayed nice and stable, very rare to see any kind of proper judder or stumble, uh, even when things get pretty intensive. Though I've got to say, after a fair bit of gaming on this phone, the top end was starting to heat up rather badly. That's despite the fact that you've got a nine layer cooling system packed inside of here, including a vapor chamber, a bit of thermal gel, all the usual shenanigans. I wasn't massively surprised that it was heating up given that it is quite a slender smartphone. So yeah, if you are going to be looking for a phone to game on for a long period quite regularly, then you might want to look elsewhere. But otherwise, just a half hour here, an hour there on a good bit of Genshin, no worries. 
And naturally, you've got your 5G support, you've got your Wi-Fi 6E support, so no issues on the connectivity. Certainly the Wi-Fi, nice and nippy. I downloaded that Genshin Impact file in absolutely record time. And I'm certainly impressed on the battery front as well, because in that slender chassis is packed a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell, and that certainly seems to be doing the job. I'm down to 47% battery, that's after several hours of screen on time now, with lots of streaming of media, a good bit of Genshin, of course. I've been streaming some Deezer and some podcasts and everything as well, so I reckon this thing will see you through the day, no worries whatsoever. When it does come time to recharge as well, no worries there, because the ZT Axon 40 Ultra supports 65 watt fast charging. Yeah, it's not quite as impressive as a lot of rivals from like some Xiaomi and Realme who have spaffed out 150 watt fast charging, for instance, but you know, plug it in for 10 minutes, you'll get enough charge to see you through a few hours of use. Unfortunately, there were no wireless charging support, or certainly at the very least, it didn't seem to like my wireless charging pads that I tested it with, so that's a bit of a bum, especially as it's a pretty standard feature for premium smartphones. So now, dear friends, let's finish up this ZTE Axon 40 Ultra unboxing with a squint at the triple 64 meg camera setup. That primary camera sensor is a 64 megapixel Sony IMX787 with built-in optical image stabilization. The shutter speed's reasonably quick as long as it isn't low light conditions, in which case sometimes it takes its sweet time to process the image and uh, the focal speed nice and nippy as well as you can see there. And ZT actually refers to the primary shooter as the humanity camera saying that it's the perfect way to capture living subjects and certainly I agree so far my test shots came out really really nice the portrait mode in particular really helps to highlight your subject keeps them nice and sharp in focus while the background is blurred out with a bokeh style effect. The Axon 40 Ultra doesn't shit its pants when there's strong contrast or particularly bright light about as well. It does really, really well in daylight and also in more ambient conditions as well. Once you move indoors, the images don't get particularly soft or grainy. Color reproduction still strong as well. Just remember to turn the stupid watermark off like I didn't. When it comes to night shots where you do have that night mode, which can help to brighten things up a bit, the ZT Axon 40 Ultra isn't quite as impressive as some rivals, but it'll do the job in a pinch. As you can see there, the camera UI is pretty dense as well, absolutely packed with different tools and features, including the usual AI scene recognition, HDR. Got a good bit of filter action too. There is a pro mode if you want it. It's a pretty good one as well. You've got a good bit of histogram action. Who doesn't love that? You can play around with like, the white balance, the focus, and of course shoot in raw format if that is your bag. You've got dedicated portrait and night modes and just bugger tons of other stuff that you can piddle about with if you want to. And you've even got a moon mode and a starry sky mode, which apparently can pick out star constellations for you when you aim at the camera up at the night sky. Uh, unfortunately, I live in Britain where there's constantly a thick, dense layer of cloud. Maybe I'll get a chance to test that shit out if I ever go off to Australia or something. The second shooter slapped on the back end of this phone is yet another 64 meg IMX787 sensor, but this time it's an ultra wide angle shooter with a 16 mil focal length. So as you can see, this offers a more pulled back view of the action when you need to fit a bit more into frame or you just want particularly dramatic results. And then last up is a 64 meg periscope shooter with a 5.7 times optical zoom. This maxes out at 40 times zoom when you crop in and you've got optical image stabilization so everything isn't shaken about on the screen when you do zoom right in, thankfully. And I gotta say it's a pretty good one as well. Definitely no complaints here. It's one of the better telephoto shooters that I've tested out lately, although obviously not quite on the level of the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with its mega bonkers space zoom. If you like to shoot home movies, well, you'll probably get on pretty well with the ZT Axon 40 Ultra because as you can see there, you can shoot Ultra HD 4K resolution video at 30 or 60 frames per second. Otherwise, you've also got the option to shoot with 8K and that is with all three lenses, impressively. Unfortunately, it seems a little bit buggy at the moment. Hopefully, this will be sorted soon, but I can shoot 8K video with the primary lens and also with the ultra wide angle lens, although you can't actually swap between them as you're shooting. You have to choose one and then off you go. But when I try shooting with the telephoto lens, as you can see there, it just guffs out a camera unavailable error message and then crashes the camera app. Hopefully they'll be uh, be fixing that in an update. Of course, this phone is pre-release, so it is early software. So, uh, you know, don't worry too much about that. And then last up, of course, cannot forget that 16 megapixel selfie shooter buried away underneath the display. And unfortunately, the quality of the selfies is impacted somewhat by the fact that it is tucked away underneath the screen. 
You don't quite get the same crisp detail, the same accurate tones that you would do with a standard selfie camera. And especially when you're shooting indoors in more ambient light, images look very grainy indeed. I mean, just, just, just what even is that? And if you want to shoot a bit of video of yourself with that front facing selfie cam, well, this tops off at full HD resolution or 4K or 8K shenanigans for you, unfortunately. But I reckon that even if you could shoot at ultra HD level, probably wouldn't look fantastic, similar to the selfie stills spaffed out by this thing. And there you have it, my pretties. That in a nutshell is the fresh new ZTE Axon 40 Ultra flagship smartphone. And I've got to say, yeah, there's a couple of compromises in there, including the usual lack of a headphone jack, despite the tease of the earphones being bundled in the box, the lack of micro SD memory card support as well for expanding that storage. And yeah, those selfies look rather balls. But if you can put up with all of that, and frankly, I hate taking selfies anyway, I only do it because of this bloody job, so I could quite happily live without ever doing that ever again. There's a lot to love here, including, of course, the fantastic full view display, the sleek design, the dependable performance, and the excellent battery life as well. So are you tempted by the ZT Axon 40 Ultra? As I say, it goes on sale soon globally, so I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.